Jade is breathing new life into an already released Universal Monster. Here's your look at the upcoming Jada Toys Next Level Universal Monsters 6 inch scale Frankenstein's Monster Deluxe Action Figure. Celebrate the 90th cinematic birthday of Frankenstein's Monster with this exclusive limited edition collectible. Frankenstein's Monster crafted in spectacular black and white, paying homage to his venerable misunderstood universal silver screen icon. Just as Frankenstein's Monster is a man of many parts, this set comes with an exclusive parts that make a true collector's piece. The recognizable and fully functional operating table features straps, footrest, head block, electrical wiring, and fabric lab table cover. Accessories include alternate head, hands, and accessories. The 6-inch scale figure comes with a collector-friendly premium package, only available on Next Level. Just before we take things to the next level in this review, I'd like to first thank the folks over at Jada Toys that kindly provided this early look at the next level Universal Monsters 6-inch scale Frankenstein Deluxe action figure, which is currently slated right now over on their website at December 1st, 2021. I'll provide the link down below again in the video description that will take you on over to Jada Toys Next Level website. And if you would like to get on board the pre-order, the release of Frankenstein is December 1st, 2021. With that being said, let's get some comparisons of figures aside. We'll move over the grayscale Frankenstein, and we'll bring in the originally looked at Frankenstein that we had a look at during the month of Spottober. In fact, I looked at the entire first wave of Universal Monsters, if you guys would like to go and check out those videos if you haven't already done so. You can see, though, in a case like this, that it's simply just the same Frankenstein that they had already released as part of that Wave 1. Although the new Frankenstein not only is going to come included with the lab table, but he's also been treated a very nice grayscale color scheme. Something of which I hoped that Jada Toys was going to do with their Universal Monster figures eventually. So the figure comes included with its lab table, and as you can probably already see, there's some assembly required. I'm going to do my best to actually assemble it in this video, so when you are looking to pick up this one for yourself, you'll see it's pretty straightforward, the assembly on it. Starting first, you have with the main table part that actually is going to have Frankenstein sitting or laying, I guess in this case, on top of it. You'll see there's a few little slots on the top there. Now, some of the slots are accommodating for the larger straps. The straps are going to go down to the bottom here, the larger straps, that is, down the bottom and along the top. And that's going to accommodate his body, uh, strapping, of course, the figure down. Now, to feed this through, feed it through with the end of the strap going in first. And what, you, what you'll then do is, as I'm feeding this around to the back, we just want to make sure that these are out of the way. And then you'll feed it around to the back and then locate, of course, on the other side is the opened area where you're then going to feed it through. And just sort of navigate everything through. They sort of have left these little ledges here where the strap will feed into. And then once that's in case, once that's the case, that's at least the top half. We're going to do the exact same thing on the bottom half. And again, just feed it straight through. and then throughout the, the other side as well, and feed it all the way through. You will want to have the longer straps up to the top that's going to wrap across his larger torso, and the slightly smaller straps will be going down below. When you eventually feed Frankenstein, or put Frankenstein on the table, you're going to want to feed these through themselves, and then they're going to slot inside the opening of the loop there. These smaller slots, by the way, will be accommodating these that will wrap around his wrists. And again, the same idea applies. You just work these straight through, keeping this part of the buckle sticking out. And then in this case, you're just going to have a slightly smaller path to take. And then again, it's going to feed around to the other side and feeding around to the front. I'll do the exact same thing on the other side now. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take these half circle parts. I've already started one so you can see what it looks like. Before you go ahead and attach the other one, you'll have these pegs on the one side of the table that will then fit into the holes located on the bottom of the half circles. But before you attach the second one, make sure then you take the connecting pipe and there's a hole located on the side that will just fit itself through. You don't have to connect the two initially right away. In fact, it's sometimes even easier if you just connect it first to the one 
What I mean by that, if you take the circle, the half circle, first connect it to this side, because then you don't have to worry about fighting and trying to get both of them in place. And then once that's there, it's so much easier, I find, to take the pipe, connect the two, connect it to the other side. And then from there, you're just going to go ahead and snap. Let's just see if you can actually see it right there. Snap this in place, snap this in place. And then you've got the back frame of the table all complete. Then we can take the support legs for the table. This would be, of course, the part that the table is going to swing on. And you have two of the same parts, although when you are putting them together, you're going to want to have the hollow side inward and the finished side facing out. What's neat, though, is that Jada did actually have these so that you can actually rotate the wheels. I think that's kind of neat the way they've done that. Now, you can't just have them attached to the table like this. There needs to be something supporting and holding them together. So they include these extra little leg piece pieces. And what they do is they just clamp not even so much clamp, but they clip inside, fit in on the one side, and then do the exact on the other side. Take that, make sure it's facing the right way, and peg that in place. And again, when you are pegging it, make sure that the hollow side is facing bottom, facing the bottom so it looks finished from the top. And then you do the exact same thing on the other side, making sure, of course, the hollow side is facing inward. And then we're just going to attach it on either side. So then we've got a supporting frame that the table is going to sit on top of. Now comes the tricky part, taking the two parts of the table and putting them together. This will allow, by the way, the table to be able to rock back and forth. It's kind of really clever the way they've done this. But what needs to happen is the table needs to be fed through the triangular frame. And you need to line the hole up that's on the top of the triangle with the hole that's in the half circle. And then connecting everything together, you're going to take this post part. And the pipe is going to run straight through the hole in the one side, hole through the half circle, and it's going to be fed through to the other side. When you are eventually going to be doing this, one thing to note, though, is that the top of the triangular post, there's a hole there, and one hole is larger than the other side. And when you look at the pipe, the pipe actually does have a little peg clip on the end. So when you feed it through, you have to feed it through the largest hole first, that when it goes then to the other side, the other side is going to clip it in place. It's going to snap in place. So it sort of helps to start it first on this side. And then once you've got that in, sort of just pull it back enough that you can get the table straight through. I'm going to try to do this so you guys can see it up close. And we're going to feed it straight through. That's one side done. Can you see that? It's going through the one side. And then we have to feed it through the other side. Getting it through this hole isn't so much the issue. Getting it into the hole, though, that's located on the side, because, again, everything has to snap in place, can be a little more of the trickier step of this. But once everything's plugged and posted in place, then you've got yourself an actual working table. Uh, short of me actually just snapping this in place, which I might actually even have to do off camera because it's a little harder to line up. But once everything's good to go, you've got yourself a working table that Frankie can lay on top of. Once completed, this is what the lab table looks like. A really nice finishing touch to have Frankenstein displayed on. And they also have the way that they've assembled it. I've noticed that you can either have it, of course, in an upright position if you want to have Frankenstein like that. Or if you want to have them in a laying position, it seems like there's almost like a ratchet joint working behind the scenes. As I'm moving it, I can't help but notice I hit like a little point where it stops. So it's a nice secure joint. And it means that the table's going to not get floppy and loose on you. But you can either have Frankenstein flat like this, or again, if you wanted to, you can also bring the table all the way around straight up like this, and you can have Frankenstein displayed on the table. And of course, the only thing that's missing from this is to put Frankenstein on the table. And because we've already incorporated the belt straps here, you can then take the straps and feed them around his body, make everything nice and tight so he's not going to break free. And you can do that with his top torso. You can do that with, let's just fix the table here a little bit. You can do that with his lower torso. And you can also even do it as well with his wrists. The wrists will be a little harder to access as well. Now, there's either this route to display Frankenstein in, or Jada Toys also includes a blanket, an actual sheet that you can wrap around his body. Now, you can either just drape it over top of his body as it is right now, or what you can also do, unharness him from the belt and I find it helps just slide this back a little bit if you take first the blanket and you wrap it around his body like you want to keep him warm because you really want to have it kind of close to his body like this it even helps a little bit to tuck it in between his legs so it just sort of gets rid of the excess of the blanket attach then it onto the table and then from there attach the straps 
And again, you're just going to feed them straight through. I won't do all of them simply for the sake of time, but at least you can certainly see that you can either have Frankenstein displayed with or without the blanket. And it certainly is a nice little touch on Jada's part to be able to do that. I think being the fact I already have the colored version of Frankenstein, I think I might be more inclined, I think, to display Frankenstein's monster, the silver screen version that we're looking at here. I think more so on the table because it's too cool of an accessory, I think, to pass up when it comes to displaying him. As for the rest of the monster's accessories, you're pretty much going to be getting the same stuff that we got with the colored version. We're going to have a look at those right now. He gets himself a pair of shackles, although they're not an identical pair, similar to the colored version. I'm going to hold up one to the other so you can see. One is notably longer than the other, but they attach the same way. Both feature real chains connecting the two cuffs up together, and each of the cuffs can be opened up to fit around his wrists. You don't have to necessarily take the figure's hands off in order to get the shackles around his wrists. Simply just open up the cuffs, clasp one of his wrists together, and that just basically plugs in place, plugs into itself. And then you'll do the exact same thing on the other side, just opening up the shackle and then fitting it around Frankenstein's wrists and then just closing it on the other side. Now, this is the longer version we just finished doing, but there's also the shorter version as well if you'd like to have him displayed like that, or even if it looks like you'd want to have him displayed like he's broken his shackles, just really attach one of them to his wrists and let the other one just dangle down below. The other figure's accessories include, let's just take these off for the time being, and do the exact same thing on the other side. The figure also comes included, like with the original release, a couple of monster hands. I'm going to just describe them as monster hands because that's certainly what I would look at them and think of immediately. The hands, unlike the, ver the version of Frankenstein we looked at already, is all done here with a nice gray treatment. Something consistent you'll see when we look at the rest of the figure in a second. To change out the hands, because as of right now, he only has just flat, relaxed hands. So they just wiggle the hands from the peg and just remove the one hand first. I suppose I don't have to spend the time to do it on both sides. I'm just going to do it on the one side for now. I'm going to just remove it from the socket. I did notice like the pegs. I've done this already one time before. Um, that The pegs are really tightly in there. So when you are twisting it, twisting it certainly would be the better route to go. I wouldn't recommend just yanking it from the forearm. You can already see how long that peg post is. So don't just try to force it out. Wiggle it and twist it if you can and then just replace it with the corresponding hand that you want to use. Putting in the new hands, the monster hands, seem to be a lot easier than yanking out the existing hands, but again, we'll do it on the other side. Bear certainly with me while I'm just removing Frankenstein's pegs. That one was a lot easier than the other one. And then just pop that back into place. So he's got those hands instead. The last of the accessories that come include with the figure, getting him to stand here for a second. Let's just twist his feet around just a little bit. There we go. The figure also comes included with this head sculpt too. If that looks somewhat familiar to you, I'm going to bring in the one that came included with the colored version of Frankenstein. So you can see, in fact, they are identical to one another. Short of just a different change of paint, different change of pace, I suppose. Uh, it is a nice looking head sculpt. Uh, so much so that I ended up displaying Frankenstein with this head sculpt for the longest of times before I reverted back to his original defaulted head sculpt. I really love this head sculpt quite a lot. And the gray, I tell you, though, while there isn't as much color happening here, it certainly just has as much personality on this head sculpt that it did on this one here. And to replace the head sculpts, simply just grab on, hold on to the figure so he's not going to escape on you, and just twist the head off the ball peg. It's a very small post. I may have even mentioned that when we first had a look at the figure. And then we're just going to attach this onto his neck, just like that. Certainly one other thing that I also wanted to talk about, going back to the table if I can for a second. Remember, he does certainly have the posts on the sides of his neck. That's a calling card, certainly for Frankenstein. The neat thing about the table, though, I'm going to bring back in the lab table. Remember these that were on the side? Well, these actually attach. I'm going to see if I can do this where you guys can see it. These attach to the bolts on the sides of his neck. Now, granted, the, the tubing is pretty soft plastic, but you can actually have it displayed and bring Frankenstein around to the front of the table so you can see it here. And we're going to bring around the other tube. And that, again, can be bolted. See, there's a little hole right there. It literally will just fit over top of the bolt. I just wouldn't recommend putting a lot of pressure on it because you don't want to buckle the plastic of the bolts. 
But yeah, if you want to display Frankenstein with that attached, by all means, you can certainly do that. Looking now at Frankenstein's articulation, being of course that his head is attached to that ball peg, you're going to get all the benefits that go along with the ball peg. So a good range of motion with the head rotating all the way around. You can of course have the head looking up and down and also back and forth. Although sometimes doing that, you'll pop the head off inadvertently. Let's pop that back into place. Yes, back and forth. When it comes to the shoulders, you can bring the shoulders up. Not quite at a full 90 degree angle bend. I would just say maybe about a 45. That's as far up as it seems to want to go. I think it was also the case with also the other Frankenstein we had a look at. The arms do rotate all the way around. He has a swivel on his bicep area. The figure has a double hinge on the elbow. One and two. And he does also have, depending on what hands you decide to use, they work the same way. The hands rotate all the way around. And you can also hinge them back and forth. Underneath the slightly softer, slightly softer plastic, you can see that there's an upper torso ball joint that allows the upper torso to rotate this way. In addition to that, the figure also has a secondary joint, a waist swivel down below here. So he has, providing I can get the jacket out of the way, again, upper torso ball joint. And I guess it's more so a lower torso swivel. Yeah, it's not quite a ball joint, I think, working behind the scenes there. The legs split out. You can bring the legs forward and back. About three quarters of the way up the thigh, you can swivel all the way around on the leg, double hinge on the knee. And then like the other Frankenstein we had to look at, his feet move back and forth this way. And you can also get that ankle pivot happening too. Certainly one of the benefits as well that they've now released this next level Frankie. Let's get his arms all displayed here. If you are looking to pick this one up for yourself, you can then also have two different looks for Frankenstein. Two with two different head sculpts at least. The grayscale definitely works really well for Frankenstein. That was one of the things I did mention when we had a look at the Frankenstein and also the rest of the Universal Monsters that Jada Toys put out. I really wished that they would release these eventually in grayscale. And as you certainly have seen, have seen in this review, the next level Frankenstein not only gives you, not only gives you that grayscale look to Frankenstein as he would appear in the film, but they also give you the lab table. And certainly as well, that's the price of admission when picking up this figure for your collection. Uh oh, uh oh, the monster is breaking loose. What a neat looking figure of Frankenstein, already loving that first wave of universal monster figures that we've got from Jada Toys. They're now taking Frankenstein's monster and taking him to the next level. See what I did there? Not only are you getting the same Frankenstein, but at least done in a different color scheme. So it's not simply just the repack of the same Frankenstein's monster that we're getting before. No, 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 no. We are getting the black and white silver screen look to him. So this is the way that the monster would look on the big screen if you're old enough to see it on the big screen. Unfortunately, I wasn't. This one also includes the lab table. Now, the lab table, I can certainly understand as from a retail standpoint that they probably couldn't release with Frankenstein on a retail level because he would just be a little bit more expensive, but certainly available as an online sort of exclusive. Absolutely. I really like the look of what they've done with Frankenstein's monster. I kind of asked myself the question, what could they also do with other black and white versions of the characters that we've already had a look at? The creature from the Black Lagoon, Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula himself. Could they also take those to the next level, re-releasing those figures in a black and white color scheme, giving them also maybe movie tie-in accessories, tables, maybe even coffins? It certainly does leave a very interesting concept. How far can they take the Universal Monsters? Not only giving us future Universal Monsters, but again, taking the ones that we already have and taking them again to the next level. Now, again, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the deluxe version of Frankenstein right now is a pre-order over on Jada Toys' Next Level website. I'll provide the link down below in the video description. It's slated to release for December 1st, 2021. And the price point actually is not bad. It's 40 US dollars. That gives you the black and white version of Frankenstein, all the accessories that came in packaged with the colored version. And it also gives you the lab table. I mean, the lab table alone, I think, is the reason for picking up this figure. I dare not. I speak for everybody, but certainly the reason why I would have wanted to pick up this figure for myself, being the fact it did come include with that adjustable lab table. 
Again, a big thank you to the folks over at Jada Toys that allowed the chance to for me to have a look at this early because, again, it's slated to release about a month or so from now. Again, if you guys are interested, you can click the link down below in the video description and you can pre-order this figure before he gets released in December. If you guys are also new to this channel and enjoying the content you're seeing, hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on and keep your papers peeled because there will be more reviews coming your way in the not-so-distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.